the official moonbilly.com podcast, your source for news and updates from the hottest token in DeFi. Here is your host, the voice of DeFi, Steven. I love mobile gaming. I love that I can just grab my phone out of my pocket, have a few minutes and just play a quick mobile game real quick. And today we had an AMA with Alexi from Pocket Arena, and he told us about castle defense and a lot of other things about Pocket Arena, where you can play, earn and grow your digital assets. They've been around for a long time with some major, major brands that they've made games for, but they're really expanding quickly into this digital asset space. So enjoy. Ooh, we check out that new logo. Someone said that Moon Willie got all grown up. And man, I kind of agree with that. That new logo, that's sick. I like it. Looks uh looks just a little more sophisticated. Moon Willie has gotten grown up a little bit. How you guys doing? You know what time it is. It's 1800 UTC. I don't know what time it is for you locally, but uh, worldwide, we like to call it 1800 UTC. Every Monday through Friday, we get together. We talk a little bit about crypto news, a little bit about Moon Willie and what updates they're having, like that fire logo they've got. When and, Moon, when Lambo. <laughs> thank you for starting us off right, Jason. <laughs> uh, but we also have some fire AMAs that we bring you. And, uh, you know, we've brought quite a few of them here recently, but today is an AMA day. So you've got to be, there we go, a little bit of, it's a magical AMA day. So yeah, I'm excited to bring with you today uh, Lexi from Pocket Arena. And I haven't even seen if he's in here. If not, I can keep on going for a bit. But Lexi, are you in here? I I am, I am. Assuming my microphone's okay. It's my first time using Telegram voice chat, actually. So I'm hoping it's all good. Oh, Alexa, you, you're you're loud and clear. Your microphone's awesome. good. You sound fantastic. <laughs> really, your first time, uh, your first time doing a Telegram one, huh? That's uh, yeah, yeah. No, I usually use Discord or, or or whatever else, or Google Meets, or you know, it varies. Sure, sure, I, I get it. But yeah, yeah. So I, I know you being the, uh, and I'll introduce you properly here in a second. But I know you being a community manager probably do several of these, and Telegram has its. It has its limitations, but it has its good parts as well. So we'll work with the good parts and work around the limitations. But let me introduce you a little bit here, and then we'll kind of get on with the AMA proper. But uh, so, yeah, this is the moonwilly.com podcast. We just kind of get relaxed here. I don't necessarily have a real structured format to the AMAs. I want it to come off as just a couple of guys talking at the bar, uh, just kind of swapping uh, stories about crypto and, of course, Pocket Arena, your project. Now, Alexi is a community manager for Pocket Arena, and they have been around for quite some time, which we'll get into. And uh, as a company, they have worked with some big, big brands over time as well. So um, I'm excited to learn a little bit more about Pocket Arena because they are really getting deep into uh, the NFT space and, uh, you know, more specifically NFTs with games. So we want to be able to find out much more about that. And Alexa will be able to answer that very well. But OK, so, Alexi, we're going to get to Pocket Arena here in just a moment. But first, I want to I want to know about you. I want to know what you're all about. You're a community manager. But where'd you get started? Where'd you get started in gaming, crypto, anything else you want to tell me? Give me your origin story. Oh, that's exciting. Um, <laughs> Okay, so I mean, originally I was actually a professional esports player. I played Smite for about five years professionally, um, and then I played quite a few other games at a, a high a high level. And then I kind of faded away from that as I went into act, the actual job industry. But I still kind of kept that love for games. And then I also, on the side, I got into stocks, which kind of led into cryptocurrency through osmosis of being around gamers and gamers love cryptocurrency so you know um, so yeah then i got into that and then uh i got i got kind of into play to earn games because that seemed like the go-to it seemed like if i if i was already you know a gamer and i was already in crypto i may as well try a nice little combination of both and the idea of getting sure. rewarded for how well i play in like a play to earn space is really appealing um so I got into that and then I was looking around for different projects um, and I found Pocket Arena and it seemed interesting. I had a few things that especially stood out for me. Um, and then I decided to reach out to the team and basically 
ask if they needed any help uh, or any support. Um, I was actually, I'm still at another uh, full-time role. Uh, and so, so I'm, I still have that, but I genuinely just found the project super, super interesting. Um, so I wanted to kind of see if I could do anything for it. So I, uh, I, I got on call with Yuhi, who is, uh, she's our, um, co-founder, uh, I believe. And, uh, yeah, so, so I got on call with her and we had a great chat and some really interesting discussions happened. And then afterwards, kind of signed on and it kind of led into this community manager role and this sort of, uh, I, I now appear on all of the AMAs and everything as well, which is quite exciting. It's kind of like we get this, this new AMA that comes in. They're like, Oh, Alexi, that's for you. Um, so, so that's, yeah, that's, no, that's I've seen you as well. I've seen you around YouTube and some different things that are recorded. <clears throat> Cause as before I get you on here, I always like to do a little bit of research and yeah, you're right. Yeah. You do a lot of these. And uh, so you're, you're very well versed at it, but I think it's interesting. And this goes for any of us of where we find ourselves in life in a career or in our job. It's never that we actually, you know, study for that job. It always ends up being kind of a, a blend together of all of your experiences and you coming from, you know, esports and then getting into stocks and then crypto. And then, you know, obviously that kind of meshes together to play to earn games. And next thing you know, you're reaching out and you find yourself <laughs> a, a community manager and you're sitting here talking to, to people like me. So it's funny how things come together. And like I said, it never is something that you say, that's what I'm going to be. It ends up being something that needs all your skill set that you get along the way. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you, you've definitely uh, walked that path well. And you're a good example of somebody that uh, can, can use all of their talents <laughs> all combined into into one job. So, uh you're, you're, you're a gamer and really you're just a part of kind of the wider, you know, gaming community, or, or I could even say crypto community, but not everyone in here might be really familiar with what pocket arena even is. So I want to, before we really get down into the nitty gritty of pocket arena, give everyone a quick overview of what pocket arena is and then maybe what it hopes to become. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 an odd situation because we've got this. Originally, we didn't actually plan to kind of size up in player base this fast at all. So we have this this game uh, called NFT Castle Defense that's very much taken off, and then behind that we have Pocket Arena, which is our platform where we host um, all, all all of our games, and we have I think currently it's maybe twelve to fifteen. Um, games some of them a little more smaller uh, a little smaller sorry um but yeah so so we've got we've got all of those on pocket arena and the idea is every single one of those games is a play to earn game uh that users can earn xp or poc and poc is our our um flagship token we we will be using it for all transactions on the on the um platform in the future and in games and everything and it'll also be the currency the players earn so that's kind of the idea of that is to have a sort of hub of this, of, of these cool, interesting games and to actually develop games that are fun for users rather than just a play to earn experience. And that's something that we also really want to work on and build up going forwards is kind of making sure there's a competitive aspect to it. And there are features that actually, uh, give players a play to earn feeling rather than just a logging in to do your hours feeling, you know, and that's something we really want to do. I'm so glad to hear you say that because, yeah, I think as play to earn is becoming a bigger and bigger, you know, segment of the industry, there are people or projects that are putting something out there that, like you said, it's almost like you're just clocking in and clocking out to uh, to play. It needs to be play to earn. You need to enjoy it and maybe even feel like it'd be something that you would do anyway. You know, um, yeah. I, I'm an old school gamer and I'd play Mario and I'd get coins on Mario and I, I didn't get to keep them. <laughs> they, they weren't worth anything, but I, I, I wanted to do it. Uh, and yeah, so I hope that you guys are continuing that, you know, that it's fun. So just yeah. to restate what you said, you said Pocket Arena is more the platform. And then you have several games under that platform, including Castle Defense, that are all, uh, you know, play to earn type of games with your idea of, you know, uh, making them fun too. So Castle Defense, it's really taken off. Uh, when when did it really just kind of hit that critical mass of being so popular? Um, funnily enough, right as I joined, uh, I wouldn't say it's a critical <laughs> mass even. I'd say like, we're very happy with our current player base and really happy with how things are going. But like 
with the stuff that we've got planned in the next few months and going into next year as well, um, we're just kind of hoping that we can handle the onboarding of players that we're expecting. Uh, and, and also, well, I mean, I'm sure we can, but we're hoping that it doesn't happen all instantly. We're hoping to get like a nice natural, um, actually healthy progression of, of players um, so that we can kind of make sure that everything's still still working. Because obviously as, as players come in, you want to make sure that there's not any sort of issues within the, the game's economy or anything like that, because then it be- can become an issue for the players that were there from the start and like actually enjoyed the game and have kind of built you up. So we, we're really happy with, with where we've come. And I think we can definitely get significantly uh, uh, stronger as a community in game. And uh, so I don't really want to say critical mass at all, uh, which kind of didn't answer your question. But no, still, no, you, yeah, um, you, you did. I mean, you know, you're saying that it's not a critical mass. We could get to there. But one yeah. thing you said that I want to kind of touch base on is you said, you know, you don't want to grow too fast, too quickly. What what might go wrong if uh, if, you know, a million I mean, people tomorrow wanted to join in? <laughs> Nothing, but the issue is, for example, right now, um, we want when we release things, we want to make sure that they are something that in the long term are sustainable for both our players and us. We want to make sure that it's something that people um, aren't going to have uh, some sort of trouble with down the line, or we don't need to constantly update because it's because something's wrong, or we need to rework so that we can actually keep developing our product in an actually new way for our users rather than just rejigging it so that users can have more issues. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that stuff like the IDO, which is coming up um, early November, I believe, and that the actual announcement is coming up uh, maybe tomorrow or the next couple of days. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say that, but I'm hoping it's tomorrow. Um, so that'll be exciting. <laughs> but yeah, so, so, so the thing is, if you get that many players, you also get an immense flood of negativity when something isn't delivered or magically um, scaling towards the enormous player base. So so if we have something like a huge surge of players right now to the point of Axie, for example, which I know is a big statement, but m- my sure. point is more that we would then, we, we would feel so much pressure to deliver with the IDO and everything, which we've, we've already sped up enormously for what we are planning because of the player base increase. Once, pl- once new players are onboarded, their initial expectation of the game will be for it to have everything that they want, right? So. Sure. If we don't have everything that they want and everything that we want to be in the game and they come and they don't see it, but then a month later it's there, they're still going to have that negative, you know, or is this actually, you know, so we want to make sure that everything's kind of in place before we get that. We really push that marketing and push the game. I'm not sure if that's the, that's a kind of good yeah. analysis of that. But- Lucky for you, crypto people are, are the most patient people I've ever met. No, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> they, uh, they're, they're very impatient. And uh, yeah, I'm yeah. sure they want it exactly like they want soon as they log on to the game. And yeah, of, of course. And I'm glad you guys want to give them that experience. But it comes with challenges. And it sounds to me like if I'm understanding you right, you want to make sure that what you kind of put together can scale. In other words, you know, it can handle millions of players. Yeah, I mean, that's that's our focus is actually building this sort of hub that in, it is scalable in the long term. And I'll get into it later, probably. But the um, the overhauling idea isn't necessarily just the games. It's also the platform. Like the actual pocket, the idea is that in the future, we will open up the Pocket Arena platform to other blockchain play to earn games. And that's something that we're super excited about and that we were actually planning prior to this kind of um, big increase in player base and popularity of NFT Castle Defense and our other games. Um, So we kind of want to make sure that in the long run, we can have this hub where it can actually benefit all of our players using POC, which we mentioned before will be the thing that's used everywhere on our platform, right? So the, every every single bit of that growth will kind of benefit our players among all games. And since that's the most integral thing, that's something that we really, really care about and want to want to want to make sure that we can do properly. Awesome. And I'm going to get into POC a little bit more here in a moment, but. First, I want to, okay, so I definitely think that the rest of this year and certainly 2022 is going to be kind of an era of play to earn gaming, but also we've been in an era for 
you know, a, a decade or more of just mobile gaming. And th- that is your, uh, you know, pocket arenas sort of, uh, you know, sandbox, if you will, correct, is, is mobile gaming. And that's one thing I wanted to ask about. I can see of like past accolades that you got, you've had of you, you have customers that include like KFC, Kia, Febreze, a lot of just like who's who of, of big, uh, you know, big projects. What work has Pocket Arena done for in these companies and will they be able to leverage any of that besides me just mentioning it um, that you've done it before to, into this next era? Funnily enough, we actually do. I, I was talking earlier today about plans to actually leverage those, those brands that we have connections with and that we've worked with before. And so right. one of the ways that we've we've uh, we've kind of done things before is we've created mobile games kind of for their brand in particular. So a lot of ways that companies will engage their users and their, their, their base of whatever they're using. So KFC, their eaters, I guess. Um, But so the way they'll engage, engage their users is they'll, they'll give them something, some sort of small game or interaction in some sort of event or something like that. So, so those types of things are things that we've, we've helped them kind of gamify their, their brand in a way that can actually keep audiences entertained in a fun little way. And that's something that we've done for a long time, but we kind of want to bring it to the next level in the long run and actually create those services for those brands, but on an NFT scale. So yes. they'd actually be able to marketize, mar- marketize their own NFT for their brand officially. And well, that's a service that that we're hoping to kind of be able to provide in a similar scale, in a similar way that we were doing before, but on a larger, cooler and blockchain style scale. Man, 100% I can see you doing that. Let me give an example is, you know, McDonald's has had the Happy Meal for so long and they have their nice little toy inside it. And when I was a kid, I got the toy, I played with it, I probably broke it and it entered into the trash. But now, you know, a few decades later, I look back and I say, oh, some of those toys are actually like collectible items now. They, uh, they have some value to them and I just played with them and threw them in the trash. Now we have a new era of a, a, a group of kids that are going to grow up in a, a completely different environment with digital collectibles being a thing. And now it's possible, it sounds like through game playing or however you guys want to set it up, that, you know, instead of winning a little plastic toy, uh, you could win a digital collectible, an NFT. And I think that could really be cool about like, oh, I got the 2000 and. 23 version of, you know, this digital collectible that I got from KFC. And, and yeah, I think it could create a, a scarcity and just kind of a neat thing to be able to uh, have that normally hasn't been there. So cool. You, you answered that question pretty well of you have worked with those companies before, but it sounds like you would like to kind of take it up to, to the next level and, uh, you know, introduce, you know, NFTs. And I'll bet you have, have you went to them already and had any sort of initial talks about NFT based, uh, mobile games with them? Okay. So I, I can't, I don't know what I can say and what I can't, <laughs> but I'm 99% sure that most of it is stuff that I can't. Um, cause mm. obviously this is, this is something, um, a NFT, uh, game studio is something that we're gonna be kind of, it's something that we're going to be bringing out towards brands sometime hopefully early next year. So it's not something that's in the very imminent future, but it's something that's definitely on the horizon that we're already working on and planning for. Um, so obviously we don't have anything completely set in stone because otherwise the the launch would be a lot nearer. So uh, I, there's not too much I can say about that right now, unfortunately. I, I love it whenever my AMA guests have some info and they're, they're so yeah. much like you, I can tell they're so excited about the info. It's like, they just want to, they're just bursting at the seams to, to, to let the info go. Because I know, especially in your position, you're part of your job yeah. is to drive up hype, <laughs> you know, and you, you know, what you, you know, what you've got to say, you know, the information you say can drive up hype. So mm. I'll just say, if he's got something up his sleeve, then there's some hype involved around it. So uh, that's that's a, a sufficient of enough of an answer for me. So mm-hmm. let's talk just a little bit about just blockchain or NFTs and decentralization. So I went into Pocket Arena and I, I wanted to take a look at you know Castle Defense and what the what the login process was like. And uh, whenever I did, I signed up and I could either sign up via Google or Facebook. Okay, that was kind of my two options to be able to sign in. But once I got into there, then I could do, you know, more of a traditional, you know, DeFi sort of thing, you know, NFTs. 
How do you handle that, uh, you know, if decentralized people, you know, the NFT space, the crypto space seems to really value decentralization. They don't want anything that's centralized. So even the fact that you are a Facebook games partner, um, some may look at it and be like, oh, I don't know about that, man. That sounds pretty centralized. How do you deal with that group of people to make them say, no, 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 it's fine. You can still play our games. We are decentralized. How do you walk that tightrope? So, I mean, I actually had a really interesting conversation um, earlier today with our team actually about exactly this, actually getting to a point where like how, 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 how decentralized do we want to become? Because obviously that's right. always the goal of pretty much every game and every, everything in the crypto space becoming decentralized is this sort of big thing that everyone wants to, to achieve. And sure. um, something that we obviously value is our players being able to actually control what is theirs, if that makes sense. So yeah. although we value that immensely, um, we, we also need to, consider like for example 80 percent of our users currently use mobile okay you can't easily onboard players to uh, new players to the crypto space and the gaming community to even play on pc let alone mobile a lot of the time it's just because they have to go through an exchange then they need to go through metamask then they need to go through another login thing sometimes there's a layer two there's ronin and then you've got to go through the ronin authentication it's, <laughs> it's genuinely an immense hassle for yeah. new onboarding uh people to the crypto space and at some point um and it's 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 already reaching that point i think or reach that point new players aren't going to be coming from the crypto space anymore. They're going to be coming from outside of it. So if we have, if we leverage this opportunity to kind of have certain elements decentralized or centralized so that we can actually support those players and those newer people that aren't as familiar with the space, it could be really, really good for us and our, our ecosystem. And if we're also supporting um, all these different options for our players, some things have to be centralized. From, from from our perspective, at least. But sure, and I, I love that answer. I, I love your answer. I mean, you're right. The the process of getting into crypto is such an education, and it's it's tough. I mean, you know, the average, let's say, KFC chicken eater, okay, the average customer of some of those brands that we just mentioned, have no clue about crypto, and certainly what an NFT is. And it sounds to me like you're almost providing a service by having just that initial you know, uh, launch pad, maybe launch pad's the wrong term, but that, that initial, you know, get off the starting blocks part being centralized. It sounds like you're almost introducing the, uh, the concept of NFTs and crypto to the masses through that. Is that the idea that you have with this? In a way, it also provides a lot of, a lot more like user scalability and it does provide a lot of accessibility to users who may be already in the crypto space it's just easier to use in a lot of cases but sure. one other thing to note is that we don't want to be completely centralized that's not our goal at all it's just so that it is just for user um usability that's that's the main thing so things like transactions and everything like that in the long term we do want things like that to be uh decentralized and we do want to ensure those are decentralized same with nfts so we still want our players to actually own everything we just want to make sure that stuff is as easy to kind of uh, onboard new players for and and not really go through the whole crypto space hassle of learning 50 different things and do's and don'ts and everything. So. Well, and it sounds like you're trying to make it easier for the customer, for the end user to be able to get in and then, you know, they can, they can be in the decentralized world then. But what do you do? And I'm not trying to put you on the spot here, but what do you do whenever one of these big brands say, we want data? Because I know these big brands love, love their data, right? And, uh, you know, whenever KFC or Kia or one of them wants to know, you know, what email address signed up for this? And then we can attach the wallet address and therefore the NFTs that they own to this email address. And it becomes a little more blurred on centralized and decentralized. Are you able to, you know, push back to some of these brands or, you know, are you you are their client. So you may have to, you know, make some concessions. Is that something that y'all have considered that you may have to just decide who you're going to appease the customer or, you know, your, uh, I mean, the things, person hiring you. 
Yeah, things, things like that is, is is an interesting thing. I mean, it's not something that I've expressly spoken about and it's kind of not my my role to, to think about it too much, but I do see a point. One thing I will say is that realistically, all of... The blockchain is public anyway. If anyone wanted that information, they could get it. Like they, sure. they could know what NFTs you own, and everything like that. So we're not actually storing really any new information, if that makes sense. Um, and as for any sort of anything like that, I can't talk about it because I don't know about it and I don't want to say anything sure. that's that's like misleading. But to my knowledge, I it, the the whole the whole idea for us is to kind of maintain that the actual element and feel of of the crypto space and not not to change that in any way that's not something we want to do it's not something that would be right to do because that that kind of taints the whole idea and and our idea and i think that our idea is really cool so yeah i, I agree and, something, and, yeah it sounds yeah. like you've got the right right perspective as you move forward and it sounds like the company does as well um because you kind of need that you have to be able to appease that end user because if they revolt and we've seen the crypto community revolt against some different organizations um the revolt can be quite strong all right so let's discuss the pocket arena token poc you've mentioned it quite a bit and you want it to be really just a you know the the crux of what you're doing how does one earn poc and what's poc's utility in games so currently we're in a an odd spot because there isn't an excess of utility currently available, but there also isn't the option to withdraw POC, withdraw POC um, quite yet until the IDO goes live or well, the public listing just after the IDO. Um, but so, so, so there's, there's not too, there's actually no issues with that currently, but, uh, but yeah, so, so POC utility is definitely something that um, we are very much focused on, on the horizon. And it's firstly, you get POC by, by playing the games, you earn it, and then you also get sometimes in NFT Castle Defense, for example, you get XP, which you can then exchange into POC. So, and then after that, the idea is you'll send it to both either uh, via the ETH network or the BSC network. It'll be available on both. Then you'll go to a listing uh, such as like Pancake Swap, for example, um, and then you'll be able to withdraw your funds or whatever you want. Um, okay. So, so yeah, so, so one, one use case, for example, which we've made sure that will be going, I believe live at the same time as the, either the IDO or the public listing, but is, is all internal transactions will be using POC, um, or at least have the option to use POC. So that will be peer to peer castle trading, uh, and any other NFTs, if we sell them in the future, the castles are sold out now. Um, we're no longer selling selling those those five thousand castles that uh, have been on the market for a couple of months. We've slowly been releasing them, so we're no longer selling those. But peer to peer transactions will still be occurring. And uh, once we have POC there and actually available as an option, we'll be removing the five hundred euro limit transaction on our on the castles as well, because currently peer to peer has a five hundred euro limit um, on on the transactions. Uh, so so once that happens, we'll kind of let everyone decide what value they want the castles to have in that sense. So yeah, that's the, that's the, that's the most upcoming use case and the one that I can really talk about and get into. Um, and that's definitely definitely an interesting one to keep an eye on. That's interesting. So tell me a little bit about Castle Defense. Is it, you know, I always think of, you know, a, a tower defense type of, of game. Is that kind of how it is? Is, you know, you have a castle yeah, and you're there to defend it? It's very much, it's very much a, uh, a classic, um, classic desktop, old school uh, castle defense type game on the blockchain. That's, that's the very general idea. And that you have a castle, you want to defend it. You've got some things you can put down. You've got some troops, whatever. Yeah. But you own the castle, right? That's a some yeah, the, the that, that player, castle's an NFT. The, if the, if the player has purchased a castle, then yes. Um, there there's also ways to play without a castle and earn less uh, or maybe no rewards, and then you are also able to rent a castle in game from another player if a player has an excess of castles or doesn't want to use their castle. It's essentially the Axie scholarship system, but it's actually automated in, in the game and officially in the game and supported by the developers, which is one thing that I think is really cool about the game is that we have that feature that even Axie struggle to really implement and onboard. Yeah, that, that sounds neat. So let's say I own a castle and I play and uh, my, my castle just gets demolished. I, I, I lose. Um, 
what happens? Can I lose the castle or uh, yeah, how does no. that work? No. Okay. So there's 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 no there's no risk to suddenly losing the castle or that you can't even lose XP. You can just not get XP if you lose the the round or whatever. So gotcha. it's it, yeah, there's there's no there's no real real risk other than the actual investment, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, oh no, it's like a car racing or something where you're no, putting up This is an NFT futures or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I was like, man, they are for high stakes there. But no, that, that makes a lot of sense and makes me uh, a little more, you know, if I'm so risk averse, it probably helps out with that. So you said something earlier and, and you mentioned it with POC, but I want to ask about this more is you talked about pocket arena being a platform that other games on, you know, you know, excuse me, other blockchain games could be on this platform and use that. In other words, you can be kind of a, a overarching umbrella over them. Uh, mention that a little bit. Cause I wasn't aware of that, but you just casually mentioned it earlier on. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's something that is, is, is actually, Something that we haven't been pushing because we've been pushing for NFT castle defense and kind of trying to leverage leverage that success and utilize it in a way that uh, that, that really made the best of the situation. But things like uh, NFT uh, character studio or game studio and uh, and Pocket Arena being this uh, this more accessible uh, and and larger platform, those two elements are things that we've been very quiet on because it's not. Uh, what the focus is on for the users right now, and it's not what their focus should be on because it's it's still a little bit into the future. And once once we start announcing actual dates for everything to 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 come to come out, then that that'll be that'll be when we'll really be pushing that. But it is something that it's not a secret, and we we do have stuff on our on our YouTube for uh, NFT uh, Game Studio, for example, that we do have a we do have a nice little trailer for that if you want to go check that out. But that's. These are things that are super exciting, but also things that are still heavily in the works and we're kind of finalizing. So, yeah. Sure. I mean, and I can see why you would want to do that because you've, you've built the, the skeleton needed for that. You, you've built kind of the frameworks that will be necessary to go on to, to that level. So there's a lot of moving parts here. This is a, this is a really big, big project to both, both castle defense and, you know, more wider, more widely said pocket arena. How big is the pocket arena team? I mean, uh, you, you just sent an email and started getting communications and, and joined the team. So how, how big are they worldwide? Um, well, I mean, it, it wasn't quite such an easy process to join the team, all these deals and, you know, everything. But yeah, currently we are, we do have 40 plus people in our team. We actually previously had up to, I think we had more than 150 people in several offices over the world at one point, because uh, wow. we originally were founded in 2005. And we were quite a, a, pr- a prominent, a prominent mobile uh, games developer then. And then we slowly scaled down uh, our operations uh and then we've kind of stuck together. I think actually, funnily enough, our, our team that we have now is kind of incredible in the sense that uh, a lot of them have been with us since the start in the sense that I think our oldest, our, our head developer is, or one of our, our head lead developers, he's been around for 16 years now. Um, That's incredible. Which is, in which is, yeah, yeah. So, so it's, it's, it's really, it's really a team that know each other really well and have been working together for a long time. I'm the newest uh, addition to the team in that sense. And uh, I, that's, that's not the development team either. So, so yeah, so that's, that's one thing to note. We, but yeah, currently we only have uh, 40 plus people in our team. Um, we are, we are looking to expand our operations. Hence why I'm here as well. But um, sure. Yeah, so so that's 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 one key thing, and we have been working on things like castle defense in this project for for uh, two plus years now. I know that I know that, so it's not something that we've thought of overnight and then scaled up. It's gotcha, just the gotcha. thing that happened to catch on early was was NFT castle defense. So. Well, I, I like it, and that's why I said <laughs> what I said earlier. As far as it, it almost kind of just really grew, you know, to a a critical mass. But like you said, it just it just happened. The NFT castle defense did really take off on you and and good. I mean, that's what you want. And I think that's great for a company that was at 150 and then has scaled down over the years to now there's kind of this boom, you know, another another big mobile gaming boom. And I think you guys are well positioned for it because I do believe mobile games will always be a big thing. We've got, you know, 
a, a video game system in our pocket. And, uh, you know, a lot of people want to play, but maybe don't have the time that they did whenever they were younger and add in this NFT concept into it and mobile. And I really think that uh, it will help spread crypto, NFT, blockchain, whatever buzzword you want to say to the masses. So yeah, 40 people, that that sounds very interesting. And yeah, and by the way, no way did I think that you just sent an email and boom, you got on. I'm sure it was, uh, I'm sure it was a longer process uh, as, as most of these things take. So what might we expect? Okay, so we're getting into the end of 2021. You might want to just mention, you know, the IDEO that you mentioned earlier. Uh, I, th- I think you said early November is coming. But as we get yep. past that and into 2022, what are you uh, wanting to accomplish? What's the big goals of 2022? I mean, the big goals of 2022 is kind of an interesting one, because as I mentioned, there is there is kind of looking to expand on the pocket arena system and, and, and looking to into the when we're going to start onboarding other other games and everything onto our platform. And then there's also the NFT uh, uh, character studio, which, which is, is launching, I believe early uh, to mid 2022. Um, that's the current, that's the current roadmap for that and timing for that. But so that's, those are the two main things, but obviously also developing what we've currently got. So things like um, the guild system and the land system are two big features in NFT castle defense, which are launching still in this year, which I'm personally really, really excited about and will also open up things such as uh, community events and tournaments and the esports tournaments and the actual esports scene. So that's something that uh, I, I'll also be pushing for and looking into in the next year. So that'll be around 2022 is, is when we'll start looking into that and kind of looking into how feasible these tournaments are and how how is best to do them and everything like that. But yeah, uh, before before even that, definitely the guild system and the land system is, is, is a huge, huge update and uh, uh, and huge um, boost to the game's ecosystem. Sounds like it. Uh, so you said one thing I wanted to get you to define a little bit more is you said the NFT character studio is something you have planned in 2022. Tell yes. me what NFT character studio is. So I believe the the that's that's what the trailer on our channel is 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 for uh it's i can i can link it to you after this if you want to see obviously we're on a podcast so can't can't exactly show it to you but it is um it's it's essentially that's what we'll be using as a service to these brands to kind of gamify their brands and the target audience is more for brands and larger entities than individuals but obviously if you scale that down they'll then be the nfts and they'll be the actual games which will be utilized by the individuals so so that's that's something we're really excited for, and that also boosts the entire platform as a whole. It's not just that being um, it's not it's not just that being the the singular thing that is it's out. Oh yeah, that's good for brands. It's it's a whole growth as a as the platform as the whole because everything will be using POC as mentioned, and everything will be using the the same sort of platform and entity. Interesting, interesting. Somebody uh, that's listening to us live figured they would try out Castle Defense right now, and they they tried and lost. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was about to say it's it's just uh, just that first that first time can be tough. So, hopefully they'll they'll try again and see if they can get a little bit of experience points <laughs> out of that. So maybe they can do a little bit better next time. Um, so here in a moment, I'm going to open it up to everyone to ask some questions of Alexi, uh, maybe that I didn't ask or something that you're wondering about uh, the Pocket Arena or Castle Defense or any other of the uh, you know tentacles of this project. Um, but before I get into that, uh, where's the best place to keep up to date? Okay, I know I can follow you around the internet and find all kinds of good information, but is there a good <laughs> social media channel for that? <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, the best place is if you, if you wanna catch me and talk about guilds and stuff like that is our Discord. Uh, and then the, the other best places is uh, Pocket Arena on Twitter, which is at Pocket Arena. Then we've also got at NFT Castle Def, which is the Castle Defense Twitter. Um, unfortunately, the name's too long to fit in the, the actual handle. But um, <laughs> and then we've also got the the Telegram for Pocket Arena and the announcement channel there, which you can find in the bio bio of our Twitter. So I suggest going to at Pocket Arena on Twitter, and then you will find our Discord, our Telegram, everything, and the game, obviously, and our platform. You can find it all there and take a look. 
Awesome. You can really go down the path here where you're like, okay, start with Twitter and, you know, Twitter has common <laughs> permission. And then you're like, then you get really deep and you get a Discord. Okay. Cause Discord that's how really you like onboard it. your users. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. <laughs> now you're really deep because you're in the Discord. Next thing you know, you're playing the game and you know people and you're really, uh, yeah, you're, you're really <laughs> starting to go down the path, which is what you want to do. You're trying to get people to put their toe in the water and then, you know, just cannonball in and go for it. So, uh, doing a good job with that. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I will open it up to uh, some questions for the audience uh, where they will kind of put up some questions where you can uh, answer them. What I'll have you do is answer five questions. So uh, whenever uh, if you guys have have any questions that you would like to ask of Alexi, if uh, I don't see any yet, but if anybody puts up up to five of them, we will add in. Uh, we'll give you twenty dollars in die if he picks one of your. There's a few questions people can, are asking. Can I ask. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. There, there, there they come through with, I, I knew people were going to add in a few of them. Uh, so what we'll do is I'm going to talk a little bit about just the moon Willie uh, pr project and token just for a moment, give you a chance to read over some of these. And then if you will pick five of them and tell me uh, the name of the person that is asking the question and I'll write that down and we'll get a hold of them and uh, get $20 and die um, to them for having their question picked. So um, I'll give you a chance to look over these real quick. Uh, if you are just following us around the internet or it's not following us around, you're following Alexi around and anything that Castle Defense and uh, Pocket Arena does. This is the moonwilly.com live podcast. We meet here every day at this time, 1800 UTC, where we'll discuss obviously the Moon Willy token. That's what the namesake of the podcast is, uh, which is an auto rewards token that pays you in die. Uh, you can check out on moonwilly.com, but there is a web update that's going on right now. So be aware if you, if you go to the website and you're like, oh, what's this? Uh, they're in the process of migrating to a new web page. Uh, but what you should know also is that uh, we do AMAs commonly. This isn't the first one we do. Uh, there was a, a week earlier where we did five out of five days, we had an AMA. Why do we do that? Because it allows us to see other promising projects like Pocket Arena so we can learn a little bit more about them and uh, kind of get a good relationship going with some of these major, major projects like Pocket Arena. So join us is what I'll say uh, at 1800 UTC Monday through Friday. We don't always talk about Moon Willie. We talk about the crypto space more in general. Sometimes we talk about just what we had for lunch that day. Again, it's supposed to be just a bunch of friends at the bar just kind of talking around. If we get too off topic, I'll bring us back onto the road. Uh, but for the most part, I just let the conversation go where the conversation goes because that, that's how real conversation happens. I, I don't want it to force it to make sure that, you know, we're talking about something. I'll usually have a topic each day whenever we speak on a topic. And uh, if we get too veered from the topic, then I'll bring it back. But uh, join us sometime. It's 1800 UTC Monday through Friday. And uh, I would love to have you and love to get to know you. All right, Alexi, I see several questions have been asked here. We have, you know, a group of people that kind of follow us around from AMA to AMA, <laughs> you know, asking questions. So some of them may be more gener general or generic. If you find anything, you can answer those or you can answer anything that's more specific. If you can just tell me the name of the person before you pick one. Sure. So I'm going to, I'm going to be boring and take it from the top. Uh, and uh, I need moon. What's the total supply of the token? Uh, and, and can you, can you share detailed tokenomics of the mainnet token supply distribution? So, um, firstly, I believe the total supply is 1 billion POC. And as for the tokenomics and everything, I am very sure that it's already released on our Twitter. Let me just double check that. Um, I believe we, if not on our Twitter, yeah, you should be able to find it um, somewhere on our Twitter, the actual tokenomics um, that the, we'll be planning and any other specifics, um, any other specifics regarding tokenomics will be announced as the IDO is announced. So I believe that is in your, in your white paper. Yeah, I believe the tokenomics yeah, it is. In, yeah. is. It, it's a pretty good white paper. It's uh, almost in like a wiki style where you can just uh, have a little, uh, you know, navigation bar on the left. So you, you guys should check out that on, on uh, I think it's pocketarena.com. Yeah. And you can yeah. get to the white paper from there. Yeah. 
Um, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna break the rules slightly because the second one is an actual technical <laughs> question, so that okay. person doesn't get money. But if you email uh, service at pocketarena.com, then you should you should do that, role and then you, can, you they'll they'll help you out there. Um, awesome. Okay, so yeah, Matt Henry. Um, that's an M A A T Henry. Um, can you list one to three killer features of your project that makes it ahead of competitors? And what's the competitive ex- advantages of your platform that you most, most feel comp- confident about? So, I mean, definitely number one for me personally, right now in our in our games and our projects is the uh, the rental feature on NFT castles. Cause that's something that, as I mentioned earlier, um, is it, it hasn't been successfully achieved by any other blockchain games. To my knowledge, maybe there's a couple of small games that have somehow achieved it, but it's something that is is unique to our game in an official capacity. And it's something that I think is really cool. And um, it's really great to have that already integrated and be ahead of the game in that. And then other than that, it's it's definitely it's definitely our, our, our connections that allow us to kind of as a company, our connections allow us to actually build this larger scale platform going forwards and feasibly plan it out. And I think that that's kind of kind of incredible. So that's what I'd say for that. That is incredible. That is a killer feature. Uh, <laughs> it, you know, you've got to know these killer features because you get asked these questions and sometimes you just need to know like, boom, y'all need to know this. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's good to see you've got that right in your in your back pocket. <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay. So going forwards, I think this is the, the third, the third one. So Duffer underscore X, um, do you think that collaboration with gaming YouTubers would be a good strategy to attract users to your project? Do you plan to implement it? Um, so that's a really interesting question. And, um, I can, I can confidently say that if, if, if we did decide to go down that path, there's definitely a lot of actual, um, professional, uh, talent and professional content creators for the gaming space that I, I could quite easily reach out to and, and get them on board with that. But I don't think that we're quite at that stage yet. And I think that that's something that we'll definitely look into in the long run, maybe in 2022. Um, but I think as for now, we want to make sure that we do have features like the guild system and like um, Castle Arena and like the land system properly into, implemented so that we have an ecosystem and a game a game state that is actually uh, very appealing to players coming into the blockchain gaming space. So, yeah. So you used to be an esports gamer. Do you still have a lot of the connections from that time in your life? Yes. So, I mean, a, 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 a good amount of them. Yes, I, I still keep in touch. Some of them have even, I actually have a friend um, who's who's gone very into Solana NFTs as well, and we've we've kind of we've got this group chat with, with some of my my old my old teammates and everything, and it's it's quite fun to to talk to them about it. So I know that a lot of them are larger influencers uh, in the space uh, and have a larger following. So that's definitely something that in the long run, I'm I may I may utilize it if it if it ends up coming up. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds, uh, it, it's always good to have a good Rolodex of uh, good connections <laughs> like that. And you know, you're uniquely situated for that. So that's why I ask. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to find, I, uh, last two questions now. Sorry, mm-hmm. but I need to wreck my brain. Oh, um, no, no problem. It's a lot, it's a lot of reading for this time. of it, night. It's currently it, it, actually, <laughs> yeah. What time it's is quite it? late for me? It's, it's almost 10 PM. I'm living in Finland. So Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are, you are, I appreciate you staying up late with us, drinking a, <laughs> drinking a cup of coffee or whatever yeah. it is that you're taking to, to stay up a little bit with us. <laughs> we have a pretty worldwide audience here. Uh, so yeah, we have people from all over. I've had people that say, oh, it's 3 a.m. where I am. <laughs> Man, why are you listening to, to us? But uh, get yeah. some sleep, but uh, crypto don't sleep. So uh, <laughs> that's proven time and time again. Okay. So Olive, our services, our blockchain services really needed for the gaming industry. Many, most people prefer traditional games over blockchain based games. If so, how, how does Pocket Arena convince users that blockchain based games uh, can be more profitable than traditional games? This is kind of a generic question, but I also think it's a really fun question. Um, and I think that currently the, the play to earn space in the blockchain uh, system is actually kind of not great uh, for blockchain play to earn games in the long run. Uh, in the sense that there are games that, as we mentioned before, are you just log in and you play and then you log out and that's it. And that's not a game. That's just a glorified 
futures or glorified staking, whatever. Um, so it's that that's something that we really feel like we want to make sure isn't how our game feels to play and how our games feel to play. Um, so that's something that I think in the long run is it will, will be the trend is that games and studios will realize, wait, we actually need to make these games fun if we want to attract people in the long run. And obviously play to earn games are, are more, more, more profitable than uh, traditional games in the sense that you can actually earn, earn profits from it and you can, or you have a lot of more utility behind them and you have a lot more scalability in, in what you can really do and what you can, personalize the game with and everything like that. 100%. I've, 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 I've realized now that I've wasted so much time of my life playing games that I didn't make any money on. And this next generation gets to do the same thing and actually get paid for it. Uh, so yeah, except for, and, and except for you, you found a, a loophole in the system as you were growing up and, and <laughs> I don't know, we're, 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 a, we're a pro gamer, but uh, yeah, I, I got paid nothing for beating Zelda <laughs> except for, except for giving up time. So yeah, I'm glad you want to make it fun and rewarding and not feel more like a job. So uh, I'm, I'm so glad to hear that that's kind of, you've said that a couple times now, which tells me it's a focus of you guys. So I think that's mm. a, a great move. All right. You've got one last question to find. If you can find somebody out there that's asking a good one, we will uh, uh, hook them up with $20. I am, I am trying to find a good one. No um, problem at all. No problem. At all. You look through, I'll tell you what, I'm going to, I'm going to talk for a moment here and give you a chance, but I'm looking over at the pocketarena.com. And uh, I can see, you know, they've got on it, obviously, NFT Castle Defense is mentioned on there. But they've got some other games, too, that you should check out. Maybe maybe tower defense style games aren't for you that I see. Block and IQ, a 3D basketball, Ice Pop, Bricks and Targets. All those sound really cool, particularly Tetris. I, or not Tetris, but Block and IQ, which looks like a Tetris style game. That's another game that I've wasted a lot of my life doing, not making anything. <laughs> um, uh, but I, I like it and I, I like to think that I'm good at it. And maybe I need to spend some time in there trying to uh, <laughs> trying to hone my my skills, my block. It's never too late skills. to put those skills to the test. And that's exactly right. That's um, exactly right. Or I'll realize I'm not as good as I thought I was, but uh, that, that, could that could happen as well. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. I found a, found a great question. So Mariska, um, do you have to have audit certificates? Or are you working to audit your project and what is, and so that the security of the project becomes more secure and reliable? So firstly, I don't think that our project has any, any sort of secure security issues or re reliability issues, but Going back to the audit thing, we actually have been successfully audited by Certic previously, but we changed our plan. So our original plan was to go live uh, leading so that we'd be listed on exchanges on the ETH network. But what we've decided to do is we've decided to get listed and be available on both BSC and ETH, which means that what we're currently doing and what the idea is waiting for is for us to finish those audits so that we are fully audited and, and good to go on both fronts. So BSC and ETH. I'm glad you mentioned that here on this last question. What was the, is it just to reach a broader base? Cause you know, ETH, obviously it's got its issues, high gas fees, that sort of thing. And BSC yeah. is, you know, not as much of high gas fees, but it's yeah. a completely different set of people that use it. So is that why you wanted to expand just to be able to kind of uh, expand e your reach? Right, is, but also people don't go like like people that are already playing the game that are withdrawing. We don't want to have to have that that thing with with Axie, for example, where you have to have funds in, then you have to pay the gas fee, and then you have to have money to make money, and it's very confusing and very overwhelming for a lot of people. So you want to make so what we want to do is we want to make sure that we don't have those sort of uh, gas issues that the other play to earn games have had. But we also do want to make sure that if those gas fish issues are fixed. And if, if it does become more feasible to use ETH, we are available on that network as well. And we do support users on that network. So that's kind of, that's kind of just mainly just making sure that our actual players are as easily able to withdraw funds for as much profit as possible. Cause we don't make anything off of those gas fees. We don't, we don't want our sure, players sure. to pay any money. We want our players to, to be able to play our games, have fun and earn money. That's the whole point of the project. Uh, so, so that's, that's that kind of, I think high gas fees take away from that. And if BSC is currently the most feasible option, we definitely want to try and support that. So yeah. Will third chain ever be a option? What's well, sorry. Would a third chain ever be an option? Um, 
That is a good question that I can't yeah, answer. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. If you don't know, then then that's, that's no. I was yeah. just, I was just thinking because because realistically, we're, we're currently <laughs> more more worried about making sure that uh, BSC is is uh, is all good to go. So oh, well, I'm not worried, but um, yeah. So so that's that's our main focus. I haven't even thought about another another <laughs> change. But yeah, so I'll I'll leave that question for now. <laughs> You know us crypto people. We always want more. And if you had three chains, I would ask about a fourth one. <laughs> always wanting more. Speaking of wanting more, and, and I'm, I'm about to kind of wrap it up here, but I'm on your um, white paper and I wanted to, you've got a section here that says growth strategy. And we talked a little bit about how you, you know, are seeing quite a bit of growth. Uh, and maybe, I don't know if this is proprietary information of asking of your current users, because it says you want to have 2 million users by the end of the year. It says by December 31st, you'd like 2 million users. But then it says by the end of next year, you know, what, 14 months from now, you want 10 million users. How close are you to the 2 million that you want by the end of 2021? And what factors do you think is going to get you to 10? Because that's a, that's a times five, uh, you know, that is, goal. That is a times big. five. But as, as I said, uh, as I mentioned before, so so basically we do have this situation where I don't think we've, we've peaked in the slightest. Um, right, right. And, and I do think that that sort of scalability is completely plausible by the end of 2022, if everything or, or even most of what we're planning comes to fruition. Um, and... As, as per the, the 2 million by the end of 2021, I'm not sure how close we are to that. I'm not sure if we've reached that. Um, I, I, I personally don't know, but I do know that we've recently, I've recently had my colleague, John has been working quite hard on the white paper and he's quite, he's, he's very, very, um, uh, careful about, about what he puts into it. And he's very knowledgeable, knowledgeable about what he puts into it. So I'd, I'd assumed that those those numbers are things that we think are feasible. So that's sure that's, he wouldn't put those. You're saying you know him, and he wouldn't put those numbers if they were. Um, yeah, yeah. Or, I mean, or, yeah. yeah. It's it's not it's not it's not something that I'm aware of. Our exact uh, uh, PA active users for for 2021 at the moment, but I know that it has been a very very good few months for us, and uh, and we've been updating the white paper recently. So I'd assume it is up to date. Sure. And I completely agree with you. I don't think you've had your watershed moment yet because I am telling you 2022 is absolutely going to be huge for play to earn games. You know, I think we've seen the NFT, you know, from an art perspective, really be a big deal in 2021. So, you know, NFTs were such a big deal, but I think play to earn games is the next big frontier and you guys are situated really well for that. Well, close us out with just a, a wise word. You have, you have an interesting path of being a pro esports gamer and then, you know, getting in stocks and crypto and then doing your own play to earn games. And then next thing you know, your community manager here for pocket arena, you have an interesting path. So close us out with a wise word. If there's somebody that's trying to find their own purpose, their own path, find out what they are passionate about and they're going through the woes of life. If that's the case, what do you say to them? Close us out with uh, maybe some advice for that person. Oh, it feels it feels wrong to give advice to so many people, but I will say <laughs> that one thing that I'd recommend is actually making sure that you are comfortable with what you're doing uh, in life, and and you think about what you want, not just in the long run, but feasibly in a month or two. Make sure that you actually are happy with what you're doing, and try and achieve those small goals in addition to those big goals. So that's kind of w- what I'd say, because a lot of people they have this big. Uh, idea in their head of what they want to achieve. And if you just take it one step at a time, slowly but surely, it's 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 a lot more feasible to get there, I think, personally. Man, I love that. I love having these small goals. And next thing you know, you look back and you realize that you have achieved several of those small goals to achieve big goals. So uh, I love that. And uh, yeah, don't don't be shy about giving advice to a lot of people. It's not like it's financial advice. It's just, <laughs> it's, not, it's not financial, it's just life. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, you did very well with that. Thank you so much for coming on here. You've given us a, a lot of information and I, I, I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. It's been really fun. Awesome. Awesome. Well, go uh, wind down a little bit, get you a little bit of sleep because it's getting late. I don't know if you're uh, you know, go to bed at 2 a.m. Kind oh, of no, it's, it's no, it's, no, I'm a, I'm going to go to bed uh, uh, right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's definitely even my more. bedtime right now. Yeah, then yeah. even more. Thank you for being here with us. I really appreciate it. Thanks for listening to the official Moon Willie podcast. Don't forget to head to moonwilly.com and learn more about this exciting token.
This podcast is not financial advice. Do not take anything said in this podcast as advice for buying or selling any crypto, stock, index, or other trading tool. You should do your own research or seek the help of a trained financial advisor. This is for entertainment only. The information contained in or provided from or through this podcast is not intended to be and does not constitute financial advice, investment advice, trading advice, or any advice.